show really quickly here um, are some of the features within Mobius. And we've got a test vehicle that's set up um, that we're going to run a few quick missions with. And then show, in addition, uh, some of the 3D world building capabilities that we have. So I'm going to point to some things on the screen. Hopefully you can see at least my finger. But over on this view, we have a geo-reference map of the area. Uh, I'll zoom in a little bit to show you the spot where the vehicle is at. Uh, you can see down in the lower portion of this map, we have on our test track, which is this gray shape here, uh, the vehicle parked out. And you can see the corresponding vehicle, if we pan over, out on our test track as well. Um, then down in this display, down on the bottom corner, we have our 3D World building software that we're running. And as the vehicle drives its mission, uh, you're going to see the terrain constantly update and change depending on what it's seeing from its lasers and sensors on board. Uh, on the other panels, this panel we have a command, a set of command buttons that we can issue commands to the vehicle. Up top, we can start missions, pause missions, stop them. On this side, we can monitor feedback from the vehicle, and make sure that it's doing what we've told it to do, and also monitor the health of the vehicle, RPMs, things of that nature. Then we have a couple video feeds, this one from the inside of the vehicle, uh, this one mounted on the test trailer itself, so we can watch what's happening out on the test track, and then for our own debug purposes today, since we're testing a lot of this software, we have some of our debug windows that normally a user wouldn't see up and running. So uh, really quickly, I've got this vehicle here, and I've got some map. Um, I'm going to go ahead and preload one of the missions that we've driven before. So we just got the vehicle, we recorded everything it did, and then we can play that back. So I'm just going to go ahead and come in here and load a sample mission. I'm going to tell it I want to, it to repeat that four times and create a circuit out of it. So that just tells the computer to do that numerous times without me having to be involved. Uh, and tell it that I'm ready to do that and start. Now when I click start, it's going to run through this path you see highlighted in green. So it's going to come up here, turn down back up. And as it does that, it will be, be building in this window a path or a 3D representation world as it travels the path. So here we go. And click play. And as you can see out the window, the vehicle is moving. If you watch down in this view, you can see the red dots moving and the terrain and the picture expanding. So as you can see in this image, in the image up here, the vehicle is turned down onto the dirt portion of the track. And it's now collecting points and filling in the world on this lower portion in real time. out to the bottom of the turn. It's filling in the data there. And it's going around and come on its way back. And if you look very closely, you can see it refining the terrain as it drives through, changing heights, making adjustments depending on what it's seeing. Now we're nearing a portion.
portion where the map is completely undefined and you'll see it start to spread up as it comes near the top of the turn. While it's getting ready to do that, I'm going to invite John Edwards, one of our senior programmers on the 3D piece, to come sit in the chair and talk to you about what the software does. John, come here. What we did with the 3D software is we support all types of different terrain data collected a priori, um, but we also support real-time building of the terrains, as you can see. What we we're showing here is imagery that we've collected beforehand, which is pretty simple to collect, draped onto data that's, or terrain data that's being collected real time. On top of the vehicle, we've got a Velodyne HDL laser mounted, which collects about a million points a second, and using those points and the um, global position of the vehicle, we can update these terrains, and uh, well, create and update them in real time. We've got the, the points, as Paul said, being displayed, um, we can also turn those off and just see the terrain being updated. And so now what you're seeing is, is the vehicle driving along with the terrain updates happening without the, uh, the laser points being displayed on top of them. Thanks, John. And you can see the vehicle there just coming in. One more lap, heading around the track. Uh, John, while that's driving around, is there anything else uh, we should know about the 3D terrain algorithm? It's really cool. We, in addition to building trains real time, uh, we can also update trains. So as I said, you can you can uh, get existing data that you already have, prior data. You can uh, get it from many different sources, maybe an aerial LIDAR collection, or a um, ground survey, or um, satellite um, data that you've downloaded from the U.S. Geological Survey website or, or some other place and you can bring that data in and you can update it to if the terrain has changed or in addition you can also uh, make it higher resolution so if you download data um, at 10 meters, 10 meter data, you can update it using TruSpective and Mobius and our 3D package and update it to be 1 meter, half meter, 10 centimeter resolution data depending on the quality of your sensors. Uh, Mobius and TruSpective are sensor agnostic. We are, we're using the Velodyne laser right now, but um, it's capable of, of taking in any type of 3D point cloud data from whether it's a laser or a stereo vision system.